Look, today we're going to be talking about the hollow body guitar, how it's made, just a bunch of stuff that makes me nuts. Let's do it. You took everything I had, you tore it all apart, but baby, don't you touch my scarred guitar. What's going on, guys? My name's Sean, and if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. So I was talking to my buddy Richard the other day and he says, man, have you ever bought a hollow body guitar? I said, no, nah, I've never really liked hollow body guitars. And he said, well, why not? They're totally awesome. He said, I can rip some good metal riffs off on mine. I said, nope. Remember when we were making the acoustic guitar together and I had a few things I didn't like about it? Well, a couple of those things apply to the hollow body design too. The first thing I hate about them is how bulky they are. And the other thing I hate is those stupid tunematic bridges Gibson uses. I can't stand them. You have to put it on there, crook it, it needs a tailpiece to go with those stupid hooks on it. It's just dumb. Now, some of you guys are going to say, oh, I love tunematic bridges. Look, I'm a pretty practical guy. So let me put that into perspective for you. There's actually guys in the world that like to get kicked in the balls. <laughs> now, I've seen guys using different bridges in these modern times, but man, most of the old ones, they all have that stupid Bigsby style trim. That's a stupid trim. Sorry, guys, it is. Most hollow body guitars have a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. I've never really cared for that myself. I'm more of a Fender guy. I like the 25 and a half inch scale. I hate bent headstocks. You guys know, if you've been watching this channel, I refuse to make them. I don't think the hollow body has anything to do with the sound on the guitar either. Now, I've made tons of electric guitars that had solid bodies. Never really made a hollow body, at least not like we're gonna today. Now for the body, I don't know if you can see it real good on this camera, but uh, that's big old slabs of straight up flame maple. <laughs> Just want to carve the body out of this. Let's do it. Now you know we gotta have woods for the neck. Now I already rough cut us a little blank out of this beautiful bird's eye maple. Look at that bird's eye. <laughs> and then we got this super flame maple for the fretboard. And then we're gonna have this sick piece of quilt maple sent over by Derek from Kimball Hardwoods. If you guys don't know who this guy is, man, get in that description. Tell him Sean from Scar My Guitar sent you. Sure, he's gonna give you the hookup. Man, that body came out great. It's pretty lightweight. Now I went ahead and cut around it so the clamps would fit. So let's uh, put some glue on this thing and clamp it down. You, but I'm thinking that's gonna be enough clamping. Let's let that dry. All right, we gotta stop this video for a second because we gotta look at this quilt maple up close. I mean, just look at this thing. Kimball Hardwoods. There's a link in the description to a Z Bay. It don't matter if it's neck wood, body wood, fretboard wood, you name it, wood. He's got it, and you won't be sorry. Man, that quilt looks sick, didn't it? But let's uh take this fretboard out here, put some slots in it. Put some dots in it, run it through the radius planer. That's right, I said radius planer. Now when it comes to slotting my fretboard, I like to use these templates from a place called CB Giddy. Now I don't have a link for you, but you can look them up. Now this isn't sponsored by CB Giddy. I think I've got just about every template he sells. 
and every one of the measurements on every single one of them for every single fret slot is spot on. And we all know if these babies ain't spot on, nothing's playing right. Now I like to use my little mechanical pencil here because the lead's real thin. And then what I do is I mark it on one side of the plastic. Because you got a little wiggle room there. But if you just mark it on one side, the measurement's going to be correct. Just run down this thing real quick. And then cutting the fret slots is even easier with my radial arm saw. Now I have the little saw, but I still just love my big radial arm saw. It's just so quick and easy. See? Super quick, super fast. Now we're gonna use my 3D pen to put some dots in this guy, let's do it. Now I got all kinds of stuff for 3D printer. I got a couple of them. But the coolest thing I think I have is this 3D pen. This guy is so cool to put inlays in the guitar. Let me show you. Now if you look on my fretboard, I've already traced out the shape of what it's gonna be. And I went ahead and marked each single fret where the marks are gonna be so I won't goof up later make any mistakes that way I can double check it now I recommend you do the same thing now, I don't want to make the dots too big but I want you to see my drill bit has that nice point on it see it I'm not gonna go too deep so I'm not worried about drilling it crooked all right that's what we got and it looks pretty good, don't it? Now I got my filament in there. I've already done a couple to make sure it's working good. You can see the little digital readout. It tells me how hot it is. When I push this button right here, it comes on. And it starts heating up automatically. But let's go ahead and fill some of these other ones up. I've already put a drop of super glue in each one of them. I don't know if it helps, but I'm thinking it ain't coming out if it's super glued in there. <laughs> That, boys and girls, is how you use a 3D pen to make some really cool inlays in your fretboard. Alright, look, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I hear a bunch of sirens and noise outside of my house. So I look out, and there's four cop cars, two fire trucks, and there's not a single person to be seen anywhere out here. There's not a person inside. But all this is that parked out here in front of my house while the lights are. I'm freaking out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, there's plenty of people out here now. Obviously, some kids or something were playing around over there and did something over there. I don't know exactly what. But one of them left on a stretcher, so it couldn't be too good. Man, I couldn't help myself. I just had to stop for a minute to show you this grain on the headstock on this walnut. Look at that. <laughs> Is that crazy or what? Nuts. I mean, what do you say we take this baby for a spin? I'm gonna show you right now, it's not a trick. See, it's still flat. Let's get it going on.
I don't know if you can see how perfect the radius is, but it's it's spot on. I ran it through there five times. Beautiful, huh? Fretboard looking good. All right, let's carve the body. Quilt maple. That is one sick top. I'm telling you guys, Kimball Hardwoods. That's the only place I'll shop for my tops anymore. That's it. <laughs> you see why too. But anyway, look, we got the neck screwed up on me. You see what it did right there? I was going around the template with the router and it ripped that piece off there. Then I threw it and cracked that piece there. <laughs> But I went ahead and decided, screw maple, we're going to break this thing up a little bit. And we're going to put this walnut on there. Anyway, so what do we got to do? We got to route the pickup cavities, got to route the neck pocket, get the control cavities straight, clean up this fretboard on the sides, got to shape that, finish drilling the holes all the way through. Still got a lot to go, but we got a shell to work with, and that's looking pretty good. But uh, all this lip flapping ain't going to make it happen. Let's get it going on. Man, I didn't get the footage of me routing the neck pocket in the humbuckers. Oh, well. But it's done. You can see I got my straight line on it. It's beautiful. But what needs to happen now is I got to sand the top down real good and stain it. Let's do it. I mean, oh my God, at the giggy. <laughs> it's pretty nice, huh? Well, let's quit gawking at it. Let's get to working on it, because we're almost there. All right, we'll look at it with the neck on it real quick. I got some pickup rings loaded up here in my Cura program. Now, I love the blue stain. Blue's my favorite color. Wouldn't it be cool if we had blue pickup rings to go on the blue guitar? <laughs> Let's let these bad boys print and we'll check them out. But while that's going on, go on and subscribe, man. Ain't gonna kill you. Oh, man. I just put some tongue oil on that fretboard. <laughs> and it is screaming. Look at that. Kimball Hardwoods. That's 5A Flame Maple, man. This guy's got the best stuff. He doesn't charge an arm and a leg either. But man, look at those pickup rings. 
It came out pretty good. I like that. Now let's print some blue knobs and we'll be in the game. Man, look at this thing. <laughs> so I stained the back a nice walnut. You know, to match the neck. But now we gotta clear coat the body, shake the back of the neck, and shake the headstock, glue the neck in. I decided not to do the blue knobs and the blue pickup rings. It just looked cheesy. I'm not even gonna show you the mock-up of that. I mean... <laughs> Look at this thing. But, uh, I say we jam this guy out. What do you say? Woo, doggy. <laughs> Look at that guy. And I think Glassy. It's been born by pickups. I sure do like making cool stuff for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Both. the sound of it at all but I do know it plays really good <laughs> it sounds really good now it's got bona fide heaven's doors pickups in it appreciate you Nick this thing's got serious sustain <laughs> Cause you just won this guitar. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook and we'll get it to you. Everybody else who played the little game, I appreciate you. There's gonna be more stuff coming up. If you don't hit the subscribe button, you can't be in it. And if you ain't in it, you can't win it. Uh, I don't think I would have done anything differently. It's pretty fat the way it is to me. Uh, I love the way it sounds. I love the way it plays. But I guess you know what this means. Until next time. Don't you touch my scar guitar. Don't you touch my